Well, good morning, everybody, to you, my friends and members of the United Congregational Church here in Grand Island, Nebraska. And for some reason, the live streaming function on my Facebook has seemed to disappear. What comes up now is live video, which only has like maybe 25 seconds. I, I realize uh, that I can be long-winded, but 25 seconds is a little short to be able to deliver some type of a thought. So I'm going to go back to the old standard until I figure out what's going on, which is uh, using my recording on the camera, uploading to YouTube, and then downloading the link. Anyway, uh, this week has, uh, the last two weeks actually, have been filled with graduations of of uh, my grandson who graduated uh, a week ago Friday from uh, college completing his undergraduate degree and uh, then this last Sunday evening was his younger sister who graduated from high school and is entering uh, her career uh, for the next four years of college at least four years and uh, then I was lucky enough to be able to attend both of those physically and then this coming Wednesday I have a grand nephew that I hope to be able to uh, uh, observe through uh, a link that their high school is providing uh, as I'm not able to travel down to where he's at but he did send us a link so we can join uh, in watching this so uh, one of the things that has struck me over the last two weeks as these people are, these young people are graduating, is this concept of moving from one stage of life and moving into your next uh, stage of life. And uh, so this whole idea of what living life is about and the challenges that we have and so forth. And... <clears throat> I, it brings me back to what we talked a little bit about last week when Jesus was asked by the uh, expert of the law saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And uh, so, of course, Jesus uh, asked him, uh, well, how do you understand the law? And, of course, the teacher repeated it back. Uh, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus' uh, response was, uh, you are correct. Uh, he says, uh, do this and you will live. Um, and then, of course, the uh, lawyer wanted to press it just a little bit further and say, but who is my neighbor? And of course, this is where we tend to dwell on is that question of who is my neighbor? And Jesus goes in and talks about the story of the Good Samaritan. But I have been fascinated uh, over the last few weeks in just the first interaction where the inquirer, the lawyer, was asking, what must I do to inherit in eternal life? And is this not the question that most people uh, dwell on is uh, eternal life, okay? In other words, once this life is done, what must I do to uh, continue to have a good life? And we call that going into heaven or else uh, for those people that we have uh, concluded to be uh, non-candidates for uh, heaven, uh, we have used the term hell or Hades. And uh, Jesus never answered that idea of eternal life. And I wonder how often we dwell about that question and the answer. Uh, why did Jesus not uh, respond by saying, do this and you will inherit eternal life? Instead, Jesus says, do this and you will live. I think the lesson here for us to think about is the fact of, of uh, what did Jesus find most important? 
Jesus found what was most important is what we are doing now, here, in the present. Jesus never really talked much about uh, the concept that we call about eternal life. Almost all of Jesus' teaching always focused on what we are doing now. Uh, his very words of the kingdom is near, the kingdom is present, the kingdom is, uh, with one point he says, you are standing at the gate of the kingdom, basically. And uh, so for Jesus, the concept was how do you live? How do you have life? And uh, of course, then that plays into that idea of who is my neighbor? And most of us are uh, <clears throat> quite satisfied to be uh, content in the surroundings that we have, where we may meet a new person now and then, okay, uh, that extends our circle uh, a little bit. Uh, but what is it uh, in the sense of the ability to move outside of our circle. Because as we move outside of our circle, our world broadens. And in my perception, this is how we continue to live life, is to experience new things, uh, as well as the constants, okay? And that um, the fullness of life comes in how we are living in the present. And of course, this idea of the neighbor as Jesus used the example of the Good Samaritan story tells us that a part of our living life means living beyond our current boundaries, so to speak. So that's what I would like you to uh, mull over during this day is what does it mean to you to be able to live life? How do you perceive that? What uh, boundaries might you have to push out a little bit in order to live more in the present? Uh, because quite frankly, I don't know about you, but I can be so focused and get, you know, these blinders on that I forget to start looking around and being in the present, okay? And I think that's what Jesus is asking us to do, is what does it take for you to be able to be in the present, to be in life? So no matter who you are or where you might find yourself on life's journey, whether you are at the, the beginning of life as an adult, or if we're at the, at the uh, other end of the spectrum where we are thinking about life beyond this physical life, you are a part of God's sacred conversation. Have a wonderful day, and may God continue to bless you richly. Amen.